Here we go with the next video, which is adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. So we're going back to Year 7 again. So remember the fun we had in Year 7 fractions. So adding fractions and subtracting fractions. Very similar but very to each other, but very different from multiplying and dividing fractions. So from Year 7, uh, explain how to add fractions. You might want to uh, watch the video on adding fractions. Um, so the adding fractions song anyway. Um, if you remember anyway, you don't need to watch the video and you can just go to writing your own notes or you could use the notes that I'm about to write. Um, so from year seven, explain how you add fractions. So first of all, you need to find the lowest common denominator. You need to find the, which I call the LCD first, um, which is the lowest common denominator. Um, and afterwards add the numerators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain with an example. So, so e.g. would be two thirds plus uh, four fifths. What is the LCD? So LCD, lowest common denominator, you need to think, what's the lowest common multiple of 3 and 5? Lowest common multiple of 3 and 5, it's not necessarily just 3 times 5, but in this case it is. So the lowest common multiple of 3 and 5 is just 15. So now we've got to rewrite both fractions so that they're over 15. So it equals this over 15 plus this over 15. So 2 thirds is the same as what over 15? So you think, what do you multiply 3 by to make 15? You multiply it by 5. So you need to multiply the numerator by the same amount. So 2 needs to be multiplied by 5, so that becomes 10 over 15. Because 10 over 15 is the same as 2 thirds. Then for the next one, what did you multiply 5 by to make 15? You multiplied it by 3. So multiply the 4 by 3 as well. 4 by 3 is 12. Which makes sense, 12 is the same as, uh, 12 over 15 is the same as 4 fifths. Then when you've got the lowest common denominator, you keep the same denominator. So don't change the denominator. Don't add them together or do anything to them. Just leave it as 15. And then you just need to add the numerators. So if you add the numerators, what's 10 plus 12? It's 22. 22 over 15 is a simplified improper fraction, which is totally OK. Um, you could also change it to a mixed number if you want. But improper fractions are fine. In fact, I actually prefer improper fractions. If you were to turn into a mixed number, you think, how many times does 15 go into 22? It goes once. And what's the remainder? 15 into 22, there's a remainder of 7. So 1 and 7, 15 would be the mixed number version. Um, okay, cool. So then what we need to do, and also just look to see, can you simplify those answers? And no, you can't. Subtracting fractions is actually just exactly the same, except instead of adding the numerators, you would subtract the numerators in the end. Let's do another example, just to illustrate that. E.g., maybe let's do 4 sevenths, subtract yeah, 4 sevenths. Uh, no, I don't want to do 4 sevenths, sorry about that. <laughs> so we're going to do um, 3 quarters. Subtract 5 eighths. 3 quarters, subtract 5 eighths. This is a good exercise in terms of what is the LCD. Common thing people will think the lowest common denominator is, they'll think it's 8 times 4, 32. But that's going to complicate things. It's not wrong. You could use it, but it's just not the lowest common denominator. It's much easier if you find the lowest common denominator. So it's the lowest common multiple of 4 and 8. That's right, it's 8. So using 8 is going to make life a lot easier than if you used um, 32. You'll still get the same answer if you use 32. It's just going to require a lot of simplifying at the end, though. That's the only thing. Um, so 3 over 4, we you turn to 8. 4 times 2 gave the 8, so you need to times the 3 by 2 as well. And 6 eighths is the same as 3 quarters. 5 eighths just stays 5 eighths. And once you've got a common denominator, you just now need to subtract the numerators. So keep the same denominator. Don't do anything to the denominators. Keep it the same. And then just do 6 minus 5. 6 minus 5 is 1 eighth. 
can you simplify that? No, you can't. So let's move on to some versions where we apply the same knowledge to algebraic fractions. So x plus 5 over 2x, what's x as a fraction? It's x over 1. So x over 1 plus 5 over 2x, what is our lowest common denominator of 1 and 2x? Of course, it's just going to be 2x. So we're going to rewrite the fraction so they're both over 2x. So we're going to do something plus something over 2x. And 5 over 2x, of course, just stays 1 over 2x. But x over 1, you multiplied by 1 by 2x to make it become 2x. So we need to multiply x by 2x as well. What's x times 2x? It is 2x squared. So if you want, you might want to write stuff like this as a note for yourself what to do. Um, we now have a common denominator, so we can go equals 2x. Now we can just add the numerators. So our numerators are 2x squared plus 5. So let's just leave it at that. 2x squared plus 5. Have a little check. Can you simplify that? Like, can you factorize the top at all? Are there any common factors? Remember back to simplifying fractions. Simplifying fractions, you can end up with a problem um, where you might think 2x squared over 2x simplifies, but it doesn't. You would need to factorize the entire numerator um, and factor out a 2, but you can't factor out a 2 from 5. So we can't simplify that anymore. Because remember, I'll just don't do this, don't write this down. If you do this, remember that's killing your kitten from last lesson or two lessons ago. So that's the final answer there. I don't deserve the right. So let's just say, write a little note to ourselves. Don't kill our kitten. Um, next one. We've got z over 4 plus z over 6 minus z over 3. What is our lowest common denominator? So what's the lowest common denominator of 4, 6, and 3? Is it 48? Is it 4 times 6 times 3? Is it something lower? Uh, is it 24? Is it something even lower than that? Yes, it is something lower than that. It's 12. So you'd be correct in thinking that the lowest common denominator is 12. So let's rewrite them all as something over 12. Plus something over 12 minus something over 12. So what are our new numerators going to be? 4 times, you have to times this one by 3. So 4 times z times 3 gives us 3z, 3z, whatever country you come from. 6 times 2 gave us 12, so you need to do um, 2z. I have to draw z for these again. And 3 times 4 gave us 12. So times 4. Times 4. Sorry, one more time. Okay, I'll just need to close and close, sorry. Okay, back to where we were. So I just had to pause and close and open the file again. That's what it wants to write now. So um, 3 times 4 is 12, so times it all by 4. So we've got, sorry, times, uh, one was times 2. This one is times 4. So 4 times z is 4z. And now you just deal with the numerators. So it's still the same denominator. Don't change the denominator at all. Let's work out a new numerator. What is 3z plus 2z? It's 5z. 5z minus 4z is 1z. If it helps, if it helps at all, oops. If it does help at all, just write it out nicely. So go all over 12. 3z plus 2z minus 4z. Because maybe you'll look back on it and you'll understand it more if you did this. So it gives you 3z plus 2z is 5z, 5z minus 4z is 1z, so z over 12. Nice little simple answer there, hey. Um, let's do a few more examples. 2m uh, over p minus m over n. So what's our lowest common denominator? Which is going to be pn, pretty boring. So we need to times all of this one by n and times all of this one by p to make the denominator now pn. pn minus pn. So 
So what? So you times p by n. So two n times n is two n n. N times p made p n. So times the n by p makes n p. And then you just subtract the lovely numerators. So we've got p n on the bottom. Then on the top we have two n n minus n p. Can we simplify that at all? Just have a look. Uh, we could factor out an m from the numerator, but there's no m in the denominator, so there's no point in doing that. Um, and we can't factor out p because we'd be killing a kitten if we did, because there's no p in the 2 and n term. So we left it as it is. Done. Next we have 5 over x plus x over 1. What's our lowest common denominator first of all? It's just x times 1, it's x. Nothing exciting there. So we can just write the first one as 5 over x again, plus this thingy over x has to be the same denominator. So what do you times the right fraction by to make it the denominator x? You times it by x. So x times x makes x squared. And that's because, yep, now we have a common denominator of x, and x squared divided by x is just x. Makes sense. Now let's add our numerators. So we've got 5 plus x squared. Don't change the denominator. Keep the denominator the same. So to emphasize that, I'm going to keep it in blue. Looks like two. So you see we've kept the denominator the same. We've just added the numerators. Can you do any cancelling down? Is that No, you can't. Because if you cancel down the x's, you would be killing a kitten. Instead, you would need to um, be able to divide all three terms by an x to be able to do that, and you can't because x doesn't go into 5. Let's keep going. Um, right here. So next we've got 5 over 4a minus 6 over b. What's our lowest common denominator of 4a and b? So right, that's 4ab. We're going to write both of them in terms of 4ab minus 4ab. So we're going to have to times this top one by b to make the denominator 4ab. That means our new numerator will be 5 times b. And the fraction on the right, we're going to have to multiply by 4a to make 4ab the denominator. So 6 times 4a is just 24a. So now let's keep the same numerator, so sorry, the same denominator. Let's subtract the numerators. Keep a clean eye on whether it's add or subtract. 5b minus 24a. Can we do any cancelling down at all? Um, simplifying and stuff. Um, can we cancel down? Can we simplify by cancelling down b? No, we can't because we would kill a kitten because b is only a term in two of them. Uh, can we cancel down an a? No, we can't because there's no a in 5b. So similar reasoning. Can we cancel down any numbers? The numbers are 5, 24, and 4. I would say no, because we can't, there's, 4 doesn't go into 5. It goes into 24 and 4, but it doesn't also go into 5. So we can leave our answer like this if you like. Isn't that nice? Slightly more complicated one on the right. We have a plus 3 over b minus a plus 3 minus b over 2a. What's our lowest common denominator? It would be. I'll write that a little bit higher, better side here. LCD equals, what do you think? 2AB. So if the LCD is 2AB, let's set it up. So it's something over 2AB minus something quite long over 2AB. So what are we going to need to times the left fraction by to make the denominator 2AB? We have to times it by 2a. So we should set it up like this, 2a brackets a plus 3 minus. And what are we going to have to times the, multiply the right fraction by, the second fraction by, to make the denominator 2ab? We need to times by b. So we should go b brackets a plus 3 minus b. Groovy. Uh -huh. So what you might like to do, you could expand first. It's quite complicated because you're then going to have to subtract all the blue fraction. So you might prefer to just put the numerators together to begin with. 
there's going to be a big long numerator over a simple denominator, 2ab. So I'm going to go 2a brackets a plus 3 minus, because you've got the minus in there, b minus all of this blue thing. So the fact that you're subtracting this entire blue section is why I'm not expanding first. I'm going to expand second. So let's expand this part now. When you expand this part, you'll get 2a squared plus 6a. And then I'm going to expand this part, negative b times those three things. So notice it's negative b times a. What's negative b times a? It's negative ab. What's negative b times 3? It's negative 3b. What's negative b times negative b? It's plus b squared. And this is all still over 2ab. Still going. Now we've got to do collecting like terms and all that business. So I'm going to make my numerator purple now. 2a squared, does that join with anything? No. Just 2a squared. Plus 6a, can we join that with any a's? We can't. So plus 6a. Minus ab, can we join that with anything? No, we can't. Oh, very exciting, that is it? Minus ab. Minus 3b, can't join it with anything. Plus b squared, all over 2ab. So that could potentially be our answer. You could still look to see, can you do any factorizing at all? Like, can you do any partial factorizing? Like taking out, for example, just check this out. Like, could you take out 2a and make, well, what do we have there? a plus 3? and so on. Um, at the, this moment, let's maybe assume we can't, but I can just have a quick double check for you. And we'll just say for now that we can't simplify it anymore, so we'll just leave it as this for now. We'll let you know if we can simplify it further later on. And that's the end of the lesson. Thank you.